in order to repair this, we obviously needed another coolant reservoir, and that's what this is right here. And uh, it's brand new from Bluebird. Our friend Reed from Wolf Riggs was able to fi find this thing. And then I worked with the rep at Central State Buses, I think, to uh, actually get the part to us. And then there's this cool place in Alamosa that'll get mail for you and you don't have to uh, have an address. So that was really, really nice. We ended up getting this as a replacement. It's a little bit different. This one has this, uh, the coolant steam return from here, right here. I think this one actually has it too. We just have to pop out the bung here and take the one out of there and replace it. So um, other than that, it's very, very similar. But the way this is hooked in here, is looks more solid. It looks like they had like inside ring or something. The other one had a little red handle. It's an old style and it would pop up when the steam pressure got too high and it would release pressure before this thing exploded. Now that's not to say that this thing may have failed uh, before that thing failed, but we have a seven pounder in here now. So it will push up and then this right here will handle the, the output of the uh, overpressure, which normally would then go to a coolant reservoir, an actual coolant reservoir uh, in a car. But hopefully we just don't get hot enough to ever use that. And that's really what we're attempting to do here today. Well, all in all, I should say. Oh, well. complete failure that hose right there. So we'll take this off, put it on here. I think they put it on backwards, but it's probably because the layout dictated it. And so they just put it on that way, but it really uh, feels like it went on backwards because all the writing on the tank is on the other side. Oh, like the whole tank was on backwards? Mm-hmm. Oh. So they put it this way and all the writing, full hot, fill, add, all that's on this side. Oh. But I see why in order for this to get to here, it kind of has to play around near this. So, or the person who did it put it on, put it on backwards because they didn't, uh, they didn't know better. That's totally a real possibility. I hope I got the right size hose for this, but I did get more hose. But this hose is kaput. It's just I'm tearing, tearing through it, trying to get it off. It's kind of welded on here in a way. There we go. So, this might go like this. No. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's big chunks of this plastic still all over in here. I don't believe it. From the Beposian. <laughs> first things first is we need to tighten that up. Up here. Oops. I guess that's it. Now the question is, will this make this turn over here and be a part of this without being a part of anything else? Seems to me it will. This tape is old, man. This yeah. has been in sitting on a shelf somewhere at Bluebird's factory collecting dust for a long time. Push the bung on this side, or we will be so dumb.
Why would you be made of plastic? Well, it's turning. I can't believe it, but it's turning. Oh, you got it. Boy, that was like pure luck, actually. I can't believe they made that thing out of plastic. Yeah, me too. It's just old. Very, very old. So, I'm just gonna have to use these pliers to get in the rest of the way. This is like failing. Oh no, don't tell me that. Well, hopefully that's in far enough. Because that's what we got right now. I'm gonna try to put this in the right way, the way that I think it was actually designed to go in. And if it doesn't work well that way, then we'll change it. Like right there. It's supposed to have a lean back this way so that you can fill, right? So that makes just perfect sense to me. There's definitely enough hose there to make this work the way it was designed. So that just leads me to believe that somebody made an error. Very easy to put back together, that's for sure. Thankfully, we didn't have any structural failures. And that way we don't have any interference with the fan ever. Seems like a smart idea. But that is an absolute good fit there on that. Okay, so this right here is the overflow when the steam vent breaks, it pushes the air through this thing. And some knucklehead used a zip tie on that for some reason. Pretty sure that's not okay. <laughs> not OSHA approved. It really is just to prevent like an explosion. So this little hose here is just here to dump water to ground in the event that this thing overflows. So I'm not too worried about it. I was gonna say three six three eighths. That's what I went with. It was a swag. Swag means scientific wild ass gas. It came up a little short. Doesn't mean it won't go on. It just means you have to get do it harder. Ouch! Not that hard. Hold on, I gotta get tool. This is why PEX tools are so awesome. You ever just needed to stretch something for a second just to get it to fit? <laughs> the Upinor PEX tool has multiple uses. And this is one of them. <laughs> so now, I can push that right on there. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Whatever it takes, I guess. I'm telling you, man. You I've used this twice this week. Twice in two days. For purposes for other just than this, packs? For just this purpose, the stretch pipe to fit on something. Okay. Now, this has to go up here, right there. Okay, steam returns there. This is barely out of the way. You just didn't instill the most confidence in me when you said fairly out of the way. Yeah, because it's not very out of the way. That's okay. better. So now I'm going to zip tie this uh, coolant line together with another coolant line just so it stays there and doesn't have any real... I don't think it would get down into the fan here, but you never know. So by putting some zip ties there, you just kind of make that whole possibility go away. There we go. Done. All finished? All finished. Except now, for the water? Except for the water. I know we're pouring water in, but we have to get off this hill first. That's why we're using water right now. Actually, kind of surprising how much water we have left in here. The water, you can see the air levels right there right now. Oh, great. That said, this might uh, go in. Done. We've got a coolant reservoir again. We are going to have to uh, refill with coolant, which oh, it's so expensive. But uh, we're going to have to put about at least three concentrated gallons of coolant in that 
and we're gonna have to drain out three gallons of whatever's in it and dispose of it properly. But uh, that'll get us back to uh, civilization. Yeah, you know, we also have to do that with the Jeep too. We were still, we were still running water in the Jeep too. Weird. <laughs> How's it going? Good, yourself? Pretty good. Yeah. All right. Okay, we may have may not film some of this when we discovered the problem. It's either a transmission cooler or it is a oil cooler. I think it's transmission because that's where the hoses kind of go to, but I haven't really climbed up and traced them. Either way, this is a problem. Okay, so we'll come over to here. This right here is a kind of radiator. It's fashioned in the style of a oil cooler, whether it be transmission or oil. This right here is the fan and shroud for it. The problem with this is that like it should not move like that okay it's not moving because of the motors loose it's moving because the actual drive shaft is the bearings are shot okay and so while we were on the road i finally discovered right in durango this fan wasn't operating it wasn't turning on when the engine was hot and at that moment we were hot so i knew that something was wrong with this thing and so I tried to trace the wiring to wherever the sensor was. I was unable to find where the specific sensor was that would uh, turn this fan on and off. And so I went ahead and just hardwired it so that we could have this type of cooling going on. And when I turned it on, first of all, this thing made a ton of noise. Um, you know, it was creaking and screeching and rubbing and weird stuff like that, meaning that it was broken. And the second thing that happened is I think there's a short in it. When I had it hooked up when we were driving, I would lose power. And to my left, where the, where the breaker panel is, I could hear breakers throwing. So a breaker would throw, I would lose power, it would take about five seconds, I'd get power back. And this would just cycle. And so this thing had some kind of short in it that was causing problems. So, fast forward to today. We went and ordered this dude right here. And this dude is going to completely replace this when we take this off right here. I wanted to get an original run and at the same time that we had our gigantic uh, coolant reservoir explosion, um, we contacted uh, Central States buses and, uh, and they were able to uh, source that coolant reservoir for us and we threw this in there to see if they could find that. To replace this, not this, not the propeller, not the bracket, just this little teeny electric motor here was over $300. I think it was like $380. This was $39 on Amazon. Um, it appears to be a quite a bit more efficient design and uh, so hopefully it will do every bit as good or better than the original. Considering it hasn't been on, I would imagine it's gonna do a lot better than the original. But here's the thing. So the way the engine works is that part of the cooling of the transmission, if it's a transmission cooler, is a heat exchange. So the water flowing through the engine goes into this box and inside this box, a bunch of coils of transmission line are in there inside this thing and the water from the engine helps cool the transmission fluid, right? Or it's the engine oil coming through this thing. Either way, we have been missing an entire component of our cooling system this entire time, which could be the cause of our overheating problems that we've had. That we tried to rectify by adding our auxiliary radiator on the other side. So what does this mean? This means that if I put this fan on here and it works, we may have completely fixed our overheating problem and actually have extra auxiliary cooling that could give us uh, even better performance in hill climbs and stuff like that. So, and possibly even being able to tow the, Jeep, tow the Jeep behind the bus instead of driving the Jeep separately. So kind of exciting, I think. So let's get to this. To start with this repair, that fan, the new fan wasn't designed for this, but it'll fit it really well. So we got to take off the original fan and uh, chuck it. And then we got to, um, uh, drill new holes for this fan and mount it on this side where this fan once was. 
strangely these bolts and nuts came off without uh, disturbing the nut on the other side meaning it's pretty encrusted with nonsense so we're gonna probably have to bang these out I did manage to do is drop all the bolts I needed here into the dirt, except for this one. Now we have all of the bolts and lock washers and such I went with this. And we can now mount this new fan. So we need to decide how this is going to mount, which it looks like it's going to mount just like that, perfectly. And we just need to make sure that the fan blades have clearance under there, which it looks like they do. I really think this is going to work better than the original. So the interesting thing here is that this has a shroud on it already, this, this area here. Right. And so it can't pull air from anywhere. Except here. Except through it, yeah. So that is uh, good for us. First things first, I gotta get a hole going, like, or get a screw in here like this, and that helps overall keep everything else straight where you want it to be. Yeah, you gotta keep the first one in one position while you drill the other holes, or else they won't end up matching up. Yeah, huh? exactly. It's funny because it's a lot like doing arts and crafts, mm -hmm. but on a bigger, tougher scale. Yeah. Okay, we're going back to the editing dungeon. Okay. <laughs> All right, look what we got. Perfect fan for drawing air. Oh yeah, feel the breeze coming out from behind it. So, and it's all shrouded. It's acting probably better than that fan did. And now we just need to, uh, put this back on and rewire it and we'll be done. And luckily all the wiring's in place from this fan. So really the wiring on this should go pretty, pretty easily. Excited, excited about having this done. I'm excited about testing it for a change. It'd be so cool to figure out that this is what was causing our problems with overheating. Whether this is an oil cooler or a transmission cooler, either one, uh, you know, an entire cooling system wasn't working, part of the cooling system. So, and it, obviously they had it there for a reason so by hooking this back up and letting it run if the transmission doesn't get hot because this is keeping it cool then the water going through the the heat exchanger for the transmission um, won't be heating up the water and so the engine coolant won't get as hot see what i'm saying so this is this could be like crucial to the uh the cooling system on this bus i'm just finally well this is where I have to live for the next 15 minutes, and you guys all know how much I love working under the bus. But man, I can't wait to test this thing. It's gonna be super cool. Okay. I'll screw these back in here to, uh, so they stick out enough to grab a hold of the shroud. Whoa. Hopefully, we can get this on and not push these bolts back out. Getting. Incidentally, this radiator being bolted onto the screen right here is the exact reason I bolted the radiator on the screen on the other side when I added the auxiliary. It's good enough here, it's good enough over there. We have to decide which direction this is going to go, um, which direction this is, has to spin. It was designed to do it both ways, though the, uh, the propeller on this thing is obviously, obviously designed to perform efficiently in the pattern that it's mounted, and that is draw air from this side and blow it inside. Um, the direction specifically said I could run it either way. But I do want it to draw through this and blow hot air this direction. So um, we then we just have to figure out then the uh, polarization of it and then turn it on and see uh, 
see which way it uh, spins and how well it spins, how much air it blows. I'm so excited about this. It seems silly, but when you've struggled with um, overheating issues in your bus for so long, climbing hills and whatnot, um, it's fun to think that you might have solved a big problem that's been plaguing you for a long time. So one of the benefits of this, uh, of doing gut is they gave us some tools and they give us this backpack specifically. And I was really, uh, you know, like, what do I need with another backpack? Well, it wasn't just a backpack. It's a tool backpack. And it has all the, the spaces inside for all the little tools, to, pockets, so you can have easy access to them when you get them out. So I was really actually stoked by that. But I actually got a couple other tools. Uh, Heart Tools uh, was very generous on that thing and gave us uh, lots of different uh, kinds of tools and also power tools. I ended up with a cordless pin nailer and a cordless uh, jigsaw, both of which I've used numerously in this bus since we got it to fix little problems that needed each one of those tools. So while I could have like outfitted my bus as a mobile workstation, what I really wanted was the tools that were gonna help me on the road. And so that's why we ended up with that. So super stoked on that deal. All right, we have to do some cutting and we have to do some crimping. I basically have uh, the old connector here that I'm cutting off because it doesn't match the connector I'm using and I really don't care. And then this is my ground and I'm gonna put a spade on it. These are built-in heat shrink wireless things, so, or uh, uh, spade, heat shrink spade connectors. So we'll crimp it on with a good crimp tool here. And then I use my crack torch to heat shrink it. <laughs> the new fan actually has spades on it uh, in a connector. This one's gonna have to move. Uh. some zip tie on that. I've got those right here. See, handy. There we go, wires are out of the way. Okay. Now, let me show you how I disabled it when we found out it wasn't working. Right there is a relay, and you can see a bare spade, and that's the signal wire that will turn on and off this relay in order to actuate the fan. And I just, the only way I had to disable that simply was just to remove that wire so it couldn't be actuated. So all I have to do now is hook that back up. And that's this, this is the actual power wire to that. So if I pull this, our auxiliary fan and that fan turn on. So now you can hear, I can hear, I can feel the air being like sucked into this thing right here. See? Oh, I just caught this grass in there. So, yeah, it's working really good. You guys, we are being plagued with one mechanical issue after another. So what's going on with this whole situation? Okay, last night I went to get a replacement lens for my little camera that I, the, the lens I left at the meteor crater. And um, when I got there, I talked with a guy for a little bit and then went to leave and I started the car and I was sitting there for a second messing around. And then all of a sudden the car makes this <laughs> noise. And I'll demonstrate here in a sec. And a tiny little bit of smoke comes up from right at the corner of the dash, right up by the windshield, right in the corner. Just a tiny little, I cut off the engine. I'm like, Jesus, what was that? And uh, then I shifted into reverse, nothing. As I was going through neutral, okay. And then in drive, it did nothing and I had no problems on the way home. But when I got back to the bus here and was shifting back out of it, neutral made the noise, park made the noise. My God, what is going on? What is going on? Do some searching, do some searching. And then I run into something 
something talking about the neutral safety switch and the, the starter, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, this makes perfect sense. It's not the neutral safety switch, the neutral safety switch is the only thing that got me home. Something shorted under the dash, which would account for the little bit of smoke coming up. And what's happening is the starter switch is being shorted to a positive. And so when I turn the car on right now, if I just turn it to the on position, not start, but just to the on position, the car will start. So that, so the, the, that little springy section in your starter key, the ignition, is being shorted to a hot wire right now, causing the starter to engage. So when I'm in park and start the end, or turn the engine to the on position, it starts, doesn't make that noise because the, me, the, the teeth of the, uh, of the starter are meshed. But if I switch out into reverse, the starter disengages because this neutral safety switch prevents it from going on. When I hit neutral again, it tries to start. And so this time, the starter is coming in and not meshing and making a screeching noise. Oh. Okay, so here, listen to this. Come over here and videotape this. Oh, okay. Check this out. I'm gonna switch it just to the on position, not start, okay? So here we go. That unlocks the steering wheel. And you can kind of hear a weird noise. I'll put, okay, in reverse, no noise. We'll go into park. That's the car trying to start itself from that one bad wire. Now, get this. This is the other weirdness. We've been having this fuse that's been popping. And so I replaced the fuse. It wasn't good enough. So I did what you shouldn't do just so I could make my blinkers work and I put a higher value fuse in there and everything was working fine. And you know, I could drive home safely and have blinkers and stuff like that. However, if I pull that fuse, this problem goes away. So that's why this thing is popping is because it's drawing enough energy to throw too many relays or whatever it's assigned to and causing that. So now I have to actually trace the ignition wire. First, I gotta identify the ignition wire. Then I gotta trace it all the way through the dashboard there and find where it shorted out so that I can then repair whatever that problem is and make this problem go away. And I just don't know if it, it might, must be on the dash because right here, this is where that little poof of smoke came out, right here. And it was just this little one. It wasn't like pouring out of there. It was just a little thing that I noticed. So, uh, one thing after another. Thankfully, it's not the transmission. So that's really positive. And technically right now, like we could drive this home without any problem. It's, it's just that as soon as you start the car, you got to shift out of park into reverse and get it into neutral or into a drive very quickly so that you're not uh, resting in park or neutral and having that thing engage. The other option is I put like a brand new starter wire from the solenoid in here and have a little push button to start the car, which is kind of janky, but would solve the problem. So if I can't track this down to that i might have to do and and put in a button to start this car just because i don't have a whole lot of options and we're leaving tomorrow and so we have to be uh on the road so wiring problems are way easier to fix than transmission problems and way cheaper <laughs> and way cheaper and usually you can do a diy on it actually this wouldn't have happened i don't think if i had not put that 30 amp fuse in there if I had put a 10 amp fuse in there, it would have just popped. Oh no! So that's really? that's why that thing was popping. Oh, so it's just kind of my stinks. fault that, that we got to this point. I think I have 10 amp fuses to replace it with, but um, I don't want to just keep blowing them until I figure out what this is. And ultimately, that's going to come down to that 30 amp being in there. I turn that switch on, and the thing doesn't start until I turn the ignition switch. That's your troubleshooting method? Yeah, so that leads me to believe the ignition switch isn't bad because that fuse is popping and when I pull that fuse, it doesn't start. That's the, ultimately where all of this is coming together. <laughs> so there's a lot of things I have to look at today and to diagnose what's going on here. So you got your work cut out for you. I do. I do. All right, then begin. Okay. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Being a real bad boy. I've got a ton of gravel in my shoes. Girl on my shoulder.